Hello everyone, so today I want to talk about scholarships. My name is Brian. I think I met some of you, but um, to those who don't know me, I, I was a student at Denver State College and I volunteered for Upper Bound uh, a few times. And today, I, like I said, I wanted to talk about scholarships. Um, and uh, yeah, so let's start with why you should apply, right? Uh, well, I mean, first of all, it's free money. Uh, <laughs> And uh, if you need it, you should. You should be applying for scholarships if you need it, right? And like I said, it's free money. You write a few essays and uh, you get paid basically to write those essays. So, I mean, uh, I think it's uh, a, a, a good investment of your time to apply for them. Now, as to who can apply to scholarships, right? Well, it's everyone. Everyone can apply to some type of scholarship. Personally, for example, I when I got to Evergreen, when I was a freshman, I did not think I would get scholarships because I didn't have a lot of the things that I would, that I would think people would, would uh, look for, right? But I still was able to get scholarships. And uh, when I was in no clubs, I didn't really do anything uh, extra uh, on the side while I was in high school. My GPA was average. My... Uh, Scores in the standard states uh, were pretty low because at the time I didn't know English that well, so I had a really difficult time. And I had just failed pre-calculus during my last year of high school. And I, like I said, I still got a scholarship out of two that I applied. So anyone can really apply, you know, especially when you're a freshman, they'll get, um, they want to give you a little more of a break uh, on your background as to what you have done or haven't done, right? So you just need to be motivated and be passionate when you write the scholarships. But again, anyone can apply to the scholarships. Um, now, I wanted to talk more about the, the process because something that, uh, that I noticed is that throughout, like the first time that I applied for scholarships, it was really, really, really difficult. But after a few years, it got a lot easier. And that's because of the way that I approach applying to them. I developed my process of applying to them. And so that's what I wanted to talk about. Um, and really, there's a few steps. And the first one is you need to find scholarships, like a list of scholarships, basically, uh, or lists of scholarships. Um, and uh, after you have a bunch of scholarships, right, you want to identify the ones that you do qualify for. And uh, uh, yeah, just focus on those ones. And uh, then after that, I mean, you might be lucky and you may be able to apply to a bunch of scholarships. And I, really, if you're in, in, in a school like Evergreen or any other college or university, you're probably going to be able to apply to multiple scholarships, possibly even more than you can apply to. And so what you want is prioritize them. Um, and uh, I'll go about how to prioritize them in a minute. But yeah, that's the next step. Prioritize uh, which ones you want to apply for. Uh, and uh, then after you have prioritized them, you really need to choose three scholarships. I recommend three. You may want to choose, I don't know, four or maybe just two. I don't recommend just choosing one. Choose three scholarships. Three scholarships that you are going to focus on uh, the most. And uh, at least at the beginning. I'll go over it uh, a little, in a little more detail. In just a minute, after you've written three main scholarships, or while you're writing those three main scholarships, uh, essays, uh, you want to collect uh, the required materials. So depending what kind of scholarship you're applying to, they may require you to have, for example, I don't know, letters of recommendation. Most of the time they do require letters of recommendation. They might require your some proof of your uh, GPA, your grades, right? and uh, or other stuff like that for example uh, at one point i applied for an art scholarship and they require me or to or encourage me at least to submit a portfolio of the stuff that i had done artistically the, and so like i said there's different requirements for different scholarships and you want to start collecting those as soon as you can uh, especially because some things take some time right to to get to you now that you have three scholarships you have most of the materials right uh, you have three essays that you dedicated time to, and those three essays are going to be somewhat different. And so now you have three different essays that you can rewrite, mix, uh, and uh, to for other scholarships. And that makes it so much easier to apply for other ones. So like I said, 
uh, focus on three, collect materials, and then rewrite uh, for other scholarships that you may not have as much time for and they are not as high priority to you. Of course, prepare for submission and submit applications. Yeah, like you have everything, all right, uh, go submit it. You may want to submit it at least a day before, uh, possibly even a few days, if, if you can, a week before uh, the deadline. And that's because you want to make sure that they don't tell you, oh, you're missing something, so you can't do this, or you did it somehow the wrong way, right? Or maybe your internet goes out. Like, there's a bunch of things that can happen if you wait until the last day. So don't wait, submit it. Uh, and yeah, that's the last step. Okay. Now, for step one, <laughs> for step one, find scholarships, right? How do you find scholarships? Where, where do you find scholarships? Um, the easy one is your college or university website. So for example, for me, it was Evergreen. I would go to Evergreen's website and they have a section just for their scholarships. They have another section where they also list other scholarships outside of Evergreen. But I focus on the ones at Evergreen because they made it a lot easier for me as a student there to apply to them. And that might be the case also for your college or university, right? So uh, yes, the, your college and, or university website is probably the best choice that you have. And like I said, college or university specific, those are the easier ones to apply to sometimes. In <laughs> uh, the resources. So uh, like I said, you also can find some resources uh, in your college and university website, not just that college or university scholarships, also other uh, scholarships. Uh, another website that you might want to look at is the Washburn uh, here in Washington State. That might be a good one. I don't know if it works outside of Washington State or if they only have Washington State scholarships. I'm not sure about that. But uh, if you're in Washington, at least you should take advantage of that website. They have a ton of scholarships listed and they make it a little easier for you to apply to. So again, those two websites are very good places to look at. Uh, your high school, if you're just coming off high school, your high school may also have a website where they list scholarships. They may have counselors that have like folders of scholarships. I remember my own um, college counselor, They uh, she had like this huge binder of a list of scholarships. So again, the high school website or your counselor, right? They they may know where to find these scholarships. Um, and the, the nice thing about the high school websites is that sometimes they list local scholarships, which is nice. Uh, that might give you an advantage. Uh, and so for now that you have a huge list, right? Now, which ones do you apply to, right? You need to identify the ones that you qualify for. If, I'm gonna talk about the qualifications, but you need to make sure that you write essays for scholarships that you're able to apply to, that you have a real chance to get, right? Um, and now there's a few types of scholarships, but I have divided them uh, in two. So there is the merit-based scholarships and those are GPA dependent. So they will give you a, a GPA that they want if you are to apply for the scholarship, right? And so if you have that GPA or above, you can apply to those scholarships. And uh, again, like, why not? And uh, there's other types of academic achievements. So for example, if you got a certain score and a certain test, uh, they may ask you for that kind of uh, uh, score, right? From a specific test. And so uh, th there's different types of things, but merit-based usually means you have done something academically uh, that puts you ahead of uh, people, right? Or at least you fit, in, you you fill the requirements at the very least, right? Um, now, on the other hand, there is non-merit base, which in my opinion is a lot easier to apply to. Uh, the merit based ones they might re also have more requirements sometimes, uh, but the non-merit base are GPA independent, so they don't ask you for your GPA, right? They don't care how you're doing in your class as when it comes to the GPA at least. Uh, and the academic achievement independence. So again, they might they won't ask you for scores, right? They might ask you, like I said before, for like um, portfolios. Uh, uh, maybe some sample of your writing or your photography, videography or programming, something like that, right? Uh, but they're not gonna be like, okay, you need this score or you need have you need to have one this thing right uh, this competition so uh, non merit based tend to be uh, or they don't ask you for the things that the merit based ask you and so the non merit based ones 
uh, I'm gonna go into more detail about them because I think, like I said, those are the ones that in my, seem to be a lot more common. Uh, and so I'm gonna go into more detail about them. Uh, so they are also often related to need. So they are need based. Uh, th that means that uh, you are considered low income. Now, to me, and, and, and I mean, there is like the school may have or the school or the organization that is uh, giving out these scholarships, they might have specific criteria as to what it means for them to be need-based or low income, right? And you should look for those. Uh, but to me, most of the time, uh, if your family like can't afford to pay for college, you're probably okay to apply to these scholarships, right? If your family can't help you, can support you to... Uh, pay for college or university, right? Then uh, you do need these scholarships. Otherwise, you need a loan, and that's kind of like how I think. If you need a loan, you you should apply for scholarships. You know, if you if you're gonna take a loan, apply for scholarships first. And so uh, that's kind of just what it means. So don't think too much about well, I don't have any money at all. Like that's not the requirement that you don't have money at all in any way, right? But it just means your family can't support you. You will need to take out, or you or your family will need to take out a loan. And so uh, you should apply for that scholarship. Like I said, there, there may be more specific details in the school's website or organization. So you can look at those also. Uh, ask your counselor. They would know. Like your financial aid uh, people, they would know. Uh, Challenging face on your background, uh, that's another thing that usually non-merit-based non -based scholarships focus on. So, for example, uh, where you come from, like uh, what challenges have you faced? Uh, and uh, there's a long, long list of what that could look like. So, for example, if you're first generation, uh, right, Native American, uh, Black, like there's this, like I said, very long list of the things that... Uh, scholarships consider as a challenge and that you can write about and so just uh make sure that you have a, a good story to tell right like in well i'm going to talk about what that means also a little bit later but again like if you fall into these categories and there may be other ones again that i don't have listed here look at the scholarship requirements they sh they, they might have examples of what that means um and so another one is service uh so, for example, community service and advocacy, have you helped, I don't know, like in, 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 in a nonprofit, uh, have like used community service, uh, what, kind of, what kind of things have you done to support your community? Uh, and uh, this can look very different in a lot, of, uh, a lot of times, right? So, for example, you may have been part of a protest, right? That, that might be one. Uh, but maybe you, I don't know, tutor for free, I don't know, in a, at the school. That's another one. Uh, th like I said, there's just a lot of ways in which you can support your community. And so don't dismiss it outright. Uh, and uh, if you think that something that you have done support your community, community uh, you should write about it. Uh, and uh, also, like, it's about what you're passionate about. I mean, this is a little different than academic. Uh, academic merit. So um, there they look for your GPA, right? Here, they may want you to talk about you, what you're doing in class or maybe outside of class. Like, what is it that are you passionate about? What makes you feel like, oh my God, I really want to continue doing this, right? Like, how often do you feel like you want to do something so bad, right? And that's that, that speak about that, how, how passionate you are. Why are you passionate about it? And so... Uh, another thing that you need to consider in, in these applications is paperwork. Uh, just like very boring stuff. Uh, do you have or could obtain all of the paperwork that they require from you uh, to apply to a scholarship? So, for example, taxes. They may require that. May I haven't encountered that personally, but like I said, uh, they could or FAFSA or the WASFA. Did you apply for those? Because maybe your school requires you to apply for those if you are uh, to apply for their scholarships. Um, so, yeah, just think about the paperwork that they are asking you for and make sure that you can get it before the deadline, right? Now, you have a list. 
you have you have narrowed down uh, quite a bit by looking at the, the scholarships that you qualify for only right now you need to prioritize them you need to because you still may have a lot of them so how do you prioritize them uh and well i personally save everything in google drive you may have another way of, of organizing things i organize everything on google drive makes it easier for me i what i do is first of all i create a folder called scholarships and i used have all of my scholarships there now after that i create another folder called pdfs and essays and uh i'll explain why that is named that way and <laughs> inside of that one yet another folder called main scholarships so first folder it's called scholarships. If I double click in it, there is going to be a folder called PDFs and essays. If I double click in it, there's going to be another one called main scholarships. Uh, now, you may want to create a folder somewhere also to serve your letters of recommendation if uh, you were sent them directly. A lot of people will choose to send them directly to the organization uh, that you are applying this, uh, for the scholarship. I often would ask my faculty or whoever I was asking for a letter of recommendation to send them to me because that just made it so much easier to organize later. Uh, and if so if you can do that, just ask them to please send it to you, like the letters of recommendation. If they don't feel okay doing that with a Word document, they can do that with a PDF, right? You won't be able to change the PDF. The first thing that I do is download all of the uh, scholarship uh, guidelines in, in as PDFs. So Chrome has this feature where you can go to print and then uh, Google Chrome has like, you can go to print and then it, it, when you, when this like little box comes up, you have the option to send it to uh, your printer. But if you don't have a printer, you can send it to a PDF instead. And that makes it into a PDF. So I download all of the scholarships and as PDFs. Um, and then I save them. That makes it a lot easier. I don't have to load a bunch of websites. Every time I want to look at scholarships, I just go to the PDFs. I also create a folder called main scholarships. And inside of that folder, I put three of the uh, three PDFs, three scholarships, right? That I really, really, really want to apply for and that I think I have a really good chance of getting. So you have to judge that for yourself. Do you meet all of the requirements re uh, really well, you know? in the whatever the requirements of the scholarship are you fit for it and do you think you stand a good chance of getting it so don't just prioritize them by the amount of money because you can't do that but what if you don't like qualify for, uh, for those scholarships as well as you do for the uh, lower amount ones right so i recommend focus it uh, balance it balance it a little bit so you do want three scholarships that are a good amount of money but that are all, you also uh, fit into really well, right? Uh, and so, yes, like I said, three, choose three of those, uh, three scholarships they want to focus on. Uh, during this time, I also, it would be when I, I mean, I will contact my faculty or uh, people that I'm asking for letters of recommendation way ahead of time. I might contact them like maybe two months in advance, like telling them, hey, can you... Uh, like here, um, uh, this example is like an email example. Like say I, I was to ask Riva for um, a letter of a recommendation. Maybe I'll frame it something like this. I was a hi Riva, I'll be applying for scholarships in about six weeks. And I was hoping you'd write me a letter of recommendation. I would also tell her a little bit. Uh, I mean, I'm giving her a time frame in mean, about six weeks, right? I might give her the date also. Uh, but for now, this is the first email. So I'm just going to say like in six weeks, right? about six weeks. Um, and then I'm going to also say a little bit of that, the, the kind of scholarships that I'm applying to. So in this case, I did a lot of STEM classes. So I was applying to a lot of STEM uh, scholarships. So I would say maybe something like most of the scholarships are STEM related. Here's some of the links to them. And I might list a few of the scholarship scholarships. If there's a lot, you may not want to list all of the scholarships, but you may want to list a few of them. Maybe the three main ones that you want to apply to, right? Uh, and uh, you're letting them know, hey, like this is the kind of scholarship that I'm applying to, right? So that they know how to write a letter, the letter of recommendation for you. Um, and of course, uh, asking them to reply to me, letting me know uh, if they can or if they need more information before they can make a decision about whether or not they can 
write me a letter of recommendation. I mean, at this point, no one has said no to me. <laughs> you know, most people will write you a letter of recommendation if you spend some time with them working on something or they've known you for a while. And there's requirements as to who it is who can write you letters of recommendation. Your family can't, for example, right? But there's uh, community people or people at school that will, the, 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 the organizations will accept as you, uh, as your uh, recommenders. So yeah, just think ahead of time, ask for the letters of recommendation ahead of time. And maybe after I write this email and Riva says, yeah, I can apply to them. Like I'll send more information about, okay, this is the exact deadline or deadlines. And this is where you should send it. If it's, uh, or maybe I ask, hey, can you send it to me? If she says no, then I say like, okay, this is where you need to send a letter of recommendation to. It might be an email address or a physical location that they need to send it to. Now, at this point, you kind of have everything set up for you to start actually writing, right? Now you need to write the essays for, and in this case, focus on the three main scholarships that you chose. Focus on those uh, individually. And so you have three essays uh, and they should be somewhat different. That's also another thing that you may want to think about. If you choose three scholarships that are very, very similar, uh, the requirements and the prompts for them, if they're very similar, you may end up writing exactly the same. And so three essays that should help you write other scholarships are going to end up being one essay because they look so similar, right? So try to choose three different scholarships that are look different enough, right? Uh, now, once you are done with these three scholarships, they are different, right? Somewhat different, at least. Uh, you can take these ones and modify them for other scholarships. And that's how you apply for a lot of them very quickly because you don't need to rewrite essays or write whole new essays, right? The ideas that you have thought about are there already and you can just modify them, move things around, mix maybe the three essays once in a while, like just enough that it feels like a different essay, but it's really not, right? <laughs> so yeah. Uh, now, I wanna talk a little bit about also how to write for scholarships. And uh, one of the things that you have to think about is who is reading it, right? Who is your audience? And that can be different people, right? If you, for, for example, for me at Evergreen, it was community faculty and uh, uh, staff at Evergreen, you know, who were reading these uh, essays. So think about it, like who's gonna be reading your scholarships? You may even email the organization and asking them, hey, how how is the process of, apply, uh, of uh, for the scholarships, you know, like uh, who reads uh, these essays? I just want to know more. Um, and that may help you think about how you want to phrase things. So in, in my case, when I was writing for those scholarships, I was always thinking, oh, it's people around me who are reading it. It's people who even may know me, right? And so you need to think about that, who your audience is. You, you, uh, you may be able to uh, write the essays a little easier from there. And now you have an audience. The other thing that you have to think about is your why. Now, I'm stealing this idea of your why from uh, uh, another guy. Let's see, is it here? No, okay, let's go back. I'll talk about him a little bit later. But the idea is that you you may think about what are you doing, how are you doing it, and why. Often that's how people will write. They will start with what they did, then they will explain how they did it. Finally, they will explain why they did it. They may not even explain why they did it, right? Uh, and in scholarships, especially uh, non-merit-based scholarships, you should really, really focus on your why. The what and the how are also important, of course, uh, but the why is a little more important. So, because for example, for me, when I got from to Evergreen uh, from high school, I hadn't done much at all. I didn't have a lot of things that I had done. I didn't have a long list of the things that I was involved in uh, or how I did them, right? Like there was no list like that for me because I didn't have a lot of the things to talk about, but I did have a lot of passion of the for the things that I wanted to do. And I knew why I wanted to do them, right? Then, whether you are a freshman or later on, it's a really good idea to start with why. So 
uh, what that means for me, it's, for example, instead of saying, well, I studied uh, physics and chemistry and computer science uh, and that's the what. How? Well, I took uh, physical systems and I took uh, AMR and I took um, like programming classes. That's the how, right? Finally, I may say something about the why, but instead what I do is I start with the why. I start by saying like, you know, when I was growing up, I did not have access to technology. And I grew up in a very small town where I um, did not have access to information. Like everything that I knew is because people next to me told me I didn't have access to books. I didn't have access to computers or like television. I have very, very limited access to information and science. And uh, But growing up also in a small town, you know, of farmers, uh, there was a lot of nature around me, right? Like nature was next to me. And I had a lot of questions of how it worked. Like I remember one time hailing for the first time. I remember that it hurt when he was hailing. And at the time it was really scary for me because I didn't know what was what, why that was going on. I had never seen hell before. Uh, the, that, that wasn't common where I live. And so growing up, I had all of these questions of like, hey, how does nature work, right? Like, how does hail work? But also, how does technology work? I have no access to it. I don't know how TV works, but it's really cool. I can watch things. How, how, how does computers work? They seem like really cool things that can do pretty much anything at all, right? How do they work? Like, I have all of these questions that I want answers for. I'm really passionate about finding answers about things. I just want to understand how things work. And that's my why. I, I want to understand the universe and it's... Um, the laws that govern it, right? And how technology works. Like, I just want to know. I want to know how things work. And I'm passionate about that. I, I will spend hours and hours trying to feel how something works. And that's my why. Uh, my why is what drives me, not the what. The what comes afterwards. First, I, I realized that I was really passionate about science. And then I said, okay, I want to take this class because that's, uh, that's how I will learn about it, right? So focus on that. Focus on finding what is it, like, why are you doing what you're doing? Or why are you going to college? You know, it may not even be about a subject yet. If you have a focus, if you think like, okay, I'm going to study this, great, talk about that, you know. But it might not even be that. It might be like, also for me, a big motivation to go to college is my dad. Like, my dad <laughs> went through so much to, uh, for me to get to this point. And I wanted to make him proud uh, that, that he had put all of that time into supporting me, right? So that's a big why for me also. That also drives what I do. I came from a poor family, a, a poor town. And I don't want my family to go through that. Uh, and uh, 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 like my kids that I'll have, right? Like I, I, don't, I, don't, I don't want, uh, and I don't want myself also to experience the difficulties that my dad had to go through because he didn't have an education. So again, like you may have a, a subject that you're passionate about, but maybe you're not yet. Like maybe you want to explore a little bit before you focus on something. That's fine. When you're talking about scholarships, you can also talk about like the, 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 the other things that motivate you, like your family, friends, your community. Um, like, what is it, the things that are you, you're passionate about? There is something that you like. Everyone has things that they like. They have hobbies. They have things that they have like to spend time on. And that's what motivates you, motivates you to do things. So again, focus on your why. That's the important part. Write about it at the beginning. Like, that's the first thing that you write about. <laughs> like, the what you did and the how you did it comes later. That's proof that your why does drive you. That your why makes you passionate. And that you find ways to do uh, what motivates you, right? So, again, focus on your why, then the what and the how. And like I said, write, write your thesis around your why but also who your audience is. So for example, for me, I am very motivated about STEM, right? And I can talk about science all day and computer science, but I know that for like, for most people, that's pretty boring, right? So I can't just go and talk about science uh, to people who are gonna be really bored about it. So instead, I 
switch it around a little bit. I talk, uh, instead of talking just about science, I talk about how science can support uh, other people, how science has helped me help other people. So for example, I spend time tutoring students. Uh, uh, I volunteer to tutor. I volunteer to teach uh, students. And I volunteer to tutor and teach STEM uh, subjects. But I wouldn't be able to do that if I wasn't so passionate about science and STEM, right? So I need to then think about who my audience is. And, and so think about your why, but also who you are telling these things to, who you need to convince to give you a scholarship. <laughs> um, what is it that they want to hear, right? Don't, don't lie to them. That's not a good idea. They're going to see through you. Uh, but do talk about the things that you think are going to uh, appeal to your audience. And so another, another way to think about it, which it, it, it really comes down to that, is like sell yourself to your audience. So you have to sell yourself who you are, your ideas, your passion, right? You have to sell those to your audience. Uh, what do they gain sometimes? Sometimes that's the case. What do they gain by giving you that money? That may mean, for example, that you bring pride to the organization, right? That you, you're saying, hey, I'll be a good student. I'll do a lot of things after I'm not a student also that are going to make you as an organization proud that you have, have given me the money. Uh, like also oftentimes people think about their communities, right? Like what are you giving to the community back? Uh, and that may look like, hey, uh, I'm going to tutor or I'm going to volunteer to do this and that, right? Like what does the community gain by giving you that money? And uh, what does the audience also gain, right? So just think about these things when you're writing um, and do not over overestimate that people want to feel good when they give you the money, you know? Uh, they, they want to feel that they've done something good, that they made a, that right choice, you know? And uh, they also want to connect to you. So like I said, don't lie to them. Be direct. Tell them, tell them uh, uh, as things are basically, right? Uh, and uh, also open up. They want to feel connected to you. They want to know that you, you know, that, that they can connect with you. And so, again, like it's 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 this it's this. Uh, you have to open up to them and put yourself in a vulnerable position, uh, so that they can connect with you. And when when they say yes, this is the person that I want to give the money, you know, they feel good about that. Uh, it's like if you were to uh, support, say, I don't know, your parents or brothers and sisters with some money when you can, right? You want, you, you feel good about that. So that's the same thing with people. And, and again, don't overestimate this. Keep that in mind when you're writing. Uh, like I say, be real to them. <laughs> Tell them why, you know, like think about why you would give yourself a scholarship or, or give someone else a scholarship, right? Uh, so be real to them. Uh, don't lie, basically. Don't try to uh, be uh, sneaky. Uh, they're going to see through it. So this is the uh, uh, who I stole the idea with. Simon, I don't, Simon, I don't know how to say his last name. Uh, so he has a book called Start With uh, Why. And... Uh, that's where I got this idea of uh, selling your why, right? And there's a bunch of examples in it and uh, I've had to sell your why. And um, so if you have the time and if you can, yes, give it a read. Like it's a really good book that is going to give you so much more money in return through scholarships or maybe other types of essays, right? Uh, the other one is The 40 Lots of Power, very well-known book. It's a... It's basically about how to talk to people. You know, it says the loss of power, but it comes down to how to talk to people. How do you communicate communicate with people effectively in a way that is uh, not uh, confrontational? Um, and this is what you want in scholarships. You want to connect with people. You want to be able to talk to them uh, and connect with them. So these two books make a really great combination. If you can read them, that's going to help you so much on how you should uh, uh, structure your essays. And, of course, YouTube videos. I think there is YouTube videos about the 48 Laws of Power. 
I think there is some videos about start with why that go into more detail about it. So just try to find videos if you can't read the whole book or books. But again, I can't emphasize enough. If you want a lot of money from scholarships, these books will help you <laughs> get that money. Now you have essays. You have requested your um, letters of recommendation. Now what you need is collect required materials, right? Um, you need to get any kind of uh, documents that uh, they might ask from you. And uh, here's where you start things putting together. Put every scholarship and its materials into one folder uh, in your computer so that when you go to print it, you know that everything is that is in that folder except maybe for the PDF uh, with the guidelines uh, for the scholarship, it's in that folder. The letters of recommendation, everything is there. And so you print all of those things together and put the essay together, staple it together if you need to uh, submit a physical copy, right? Um, like I said, print if needed. Uh, put it in a vanilla folder if you can, that might help. Um, staple it. Double check all requirements and guidelines for each scholarship. So make sure uh, that you are not violating any of their guidelines. Uh, so if they say, don't staple this and that together, don't do that. If they say, I don't know, don't put it in a banana folder, then don't do that. But So make sure that you're doing things that are helping you, but that are also uh, in accordance with the guidelines of the scholarships, right? And this is for your three scholarships, it's for you for your three main scholarships. But now you have those three scholarships done. Everything is ready for those three scholarships at least. Now you can use those uh, to write other essays for other scholarships. Just mix them, rewrite them a little bit, right? Um, I do not recommend you starting multiple essays at once, other than the three ones. That you may want to do that, and it's possible you may want to write them at once, like write for one and then take a break and write for the other, take a break, you know, go back to the other one. So with the three main scholarships, you may want to do that. Uh, I, I didn't do that. I just wrote each one entirely and then moved to the next one. But uh, when it comes to these other scholarships that are not the three main ones, do not start multiple ones, multiple essays. And, and the reason is because you may not make it to the deadline. And the only thing that you're left with is multiple started essays. You want to make sure that anytime you invest into writing any essays at all, do go into the final product. If you have multiple essays, there is a chance that you may not finish all of them and have a bunch of essays that are just piled on, you know, that you won't be able to submit. And that's wasted time and work. Um, prepare for submission and uh, submission application, right? Uh, so, upload all of the documents, double check it has been submitted, like make sure like that it did upload, you know, that there was no error and you did upload the right documents. Uh, or send it by email, right? If you have to send it by email, also make sure everything is in the way that it needs to be, uh, in a way that it also makes it easier for the organization to find things and know what it is. Name it appropriately, right? Essay for this scholarship. I don't know. <laughs> Letters of recommendation for blast scholarship. Uh, but really, if you can turn it up, turn it in in person. That's just gonna make it a lot easier. It's not gonna get lost in, by uh, in the mail or email, right? Like it's not gonna like it's just in person. It's so much like feels more safe. You know it's there, you were there, you submitted it. <laughs> uh, and like I said, try to submit before the deadline because they may tell you you're missing something or that you did something the wrong way that you could fix if you had maybe a few hours. But if you are there on the last day, you may not have a few hours. So try to submit a few days before deadline, at least three, I would say. And Outside of this process, the other things to keep in mind is that applying for scholarships is an it's a numbers game, right? I at the top of like <laughs> the number of scholarships that I would apply, I was applying for like I think the most that I applied for was thirty five, 
uh, or 30 scholarships. I don't remember. Uh, somewhere in the 30s. And that wasn't every year, but I think there was a year that I did do that. Uh, and in the end, you just get a few, you know? And that's not a loss because you are getting the money that you need. And and uh, again, like it, it's a numbers game. The, the, the more you apply to, the more chances that you're going to get it. Uh, in my school, at least, and so I think it's also co somewhat common for other types of scholarships, uh, especially the smaller ones that not, not, not a lot of people know about, you know, because people focus on the full ride scholarships, the, I don't know, $40,000 scholarships, right? 15,000 scholarships. But there's smaller scholarships that people just don't focus on. And sometimes they don't, because it's a lot of money, they, they don't even apply to at all. Like at, at Evergreen, there will be times when scholarships would go on claim. They would just stay there because no one applied for them. And so apply to as many as you can. Don't dismiss scholarships. Like you just apply as many as you can until the deadline cuts you off, right? And uh, you've made it easy for yourself to do that, to apply for a lot of them. Like I remember this quote by one of my uh, advisors who said, I don't remember the scholarships I didn't get. I only remember the ones I got. And that's also true for me. <laughs> like I can't name any scholarship that I didn't get, but I can name quite a few of the ones that I did get. Like I got a, quite a few of them, so I don't remember all of them, but I remember the ones I got. I don't know the ones that I didn't get. Who knows what their name are? Doesn't matter. You remember the ones that you applied to. So if you get if you apply to 20 and you get like two, that's not a loss. You want something. And applying during your freshman year may look a little different than uh, the years later. So keep in mind that this is a competition. Scholarships are a competition. They are you're competing against other students. Uh, and uh, so you have to remain competitive. Like I said, during your freshman year, they give you a little more of a break, right? You don't have to have all of these things that you have done uh, to be competitive enough, right? Uh, you don't even, like I said, I wasn't part of clubs. I didn't do anything extracurricular. I didn't do any community service. I was just passionate about like what I was doing. That's it. That's what I talked about. And uh if the other thing is I want to encourage you is to think about a goal that you have in the future, you know, like if it's something that you want to do and like, but you're not sure about yet, don't, don't worry about that because you might end up doing it. So if you have an idea, but you're not sure about it's okay, write about it in the scholarship as if you're going to, because it might become something that you do end up doing in the end. And you do want to have something that people can say, oh, this is the thing that this person uh, wants to do, right? So just find things that uh, 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 you can write about, like the things that make you passionate and what you're going to do with your passion, right? If you don't have a lot to write about. If you are involved in a bunch of community uh, uh, activities or like clubs, like perfect, then yeah. <laughs> that's going to make it easier. Uh, but again, during your freshman year, you may not have a lot of that. But afterwards, like the second, third year, and four years, or if more than you're staying more than uh, longer than that at your school, you need to remain competitive. You need to start doing things that show people that you really have a passion, right? And uh, join any club, like just join a club, <laughs> get involved. Just be like, hey, hi, this is my name. I'm gonna, uh, I wanna know more about your club, right? Like you don't have to dedicate. Be like put all your eggs in one basket. You don't have to stay in one club. Do multiple ones, do multiple things uh, because this is one that's gonna keep you competitive. You know, if later on you want to uh, be more focused, okay, but at the beginning, when you're a freshman, just explore. Join a bunch of clubs, try to meet as many people as you can. This is what's gonna get you opportunities later to get involved. Uh, and you can talk to your counselors about you wanting to get involved in things. They may have ideas on how to do that. Uh, so, for example, yeah, in your community, they may have examples of maybe you should go tutor to this school, right? Or do this thing, right? You know, they may have ideas. Uh, attend any conferences that you can. doesn't matter what it is. If uh, you can attend it, go for it. You can write about it. <laughs> and uh, it's also that you might find things that you find interesting. Uh, 
become an advocate also if you can that's something that it's a it's it's, it's maybe may become a little later for you but yeah become an advocate you know uh of, of some kind of something that you're passionate about uh and I, I know this sounds like redundant <laughs> but you have to do the things that you're passionate about with passion that people can see wow you really like this right uh, like you spend more time that you need to you work more that you need to into it so uh, an example of that would be say when i was learning computer science um i could have used on the homework i could have used uh uh do the basic uh the basic stuff to get uh i don't know a uh, through class right the bare minimum basically but instead i did a lot more than that you know i started exploring how my own computer work i started to get involved in other programming languages that were not talked about in my class and that's work outside extra work that i decided to do and uh, that's what it means like that's when people can see that what you're doing really drives you that you're dedicating so much time and effort that People understand that you are passionate about this. Do more than it is needed, you know? If you think, I have some time left, nope, no, you don't. You have to do <laughs> more than you need. And the reason is because when people are choosing, say, between you and this other person to give the scholarship, you want it to be obvious that, that you are the obvious choice. You don't want them to wonder, well, maybe this person or maybe this. Nope. You want it to be clear to the people reading that you are the right choice, that yeah, it's kind of no-brainer. This one has done a little more, right? <laughs> so but to, to, to get to that point, you do need to do a lot of extra work, a lot of uh, uh, time has to be invested. Uh, that it's a, a lot of time that you have to invest in extras, right? In things that you really don't need to do, but that you have chosen to do because you are that passionate. So, do more than is needed. If you have some free time, remember you don't. <laughs> if <laughs> you you gotta do more than needed, you any time you have uh, free, of course have some fun. But like I'm just saying, make it obvious for people that you're the right choice, and that's what it means to be competitive, to remain competitive uh, throughout the years. And that's it. Uh, just. I mean, I, I don't have a lot more. Like I said, read the books about how to write for essays. That's something that is tough for a lot of people. Uh, but other than that, like, you develop your own way of applying for scholarships efficiently. And uh, where well, you're not wasting time. So that that's all for me. Uh, thank you for watching. I, I mean, I wish you good luck on applying. Like I said, if you don't get scholarships when you apply, it's fine. Like, it's fine. Uh, I applied to so many and then I didn't get most of them. I I don't even know to how many I applied anymore. And, uh, but I got what I needed. And that's what matters, that you get what you need to go to school, that you're not dividing your time between work and school as much if you can avoid it, or that you're not putting yourself or your family in debt, right? And so... Again, good luck. I wish you good luck on applying for scholarships. Don't give up on them. Uh, and uh, ask for help, you know? Ask for help when you need to know more about a scholarship. Ask for help when you need to write an essay. Uh, use ask for feedback. It's going to help you a lot to get other people's perspectives. Um, so, anyways, thank you. <laughs>